Hi, I'm Oliver and this is Deep Cuts, a channel dedicated to music for lovers of music. It's the height of the summer, we've had some blinding weather, we certainly have had in the UK anyway, we've been burning up with the heat that we've been having, so there's only one genre I really wanted to talk about in August, so this is my five albums to get you into Big Beat. Big Beat is a British 90s phenomenon, growing out of the infectious dance and rave cultures, that popularity, very increasing in popularity in acid techno and house music. Damien Harris, also known as Midfield General, was the founder, co-founder of Skint Records and the Big Beat Boutique, which was a club night in Brighton. And these two things gave a platform to none other than Norman Cook, aka Fatboy Slim, someone who I will talk about in a few records time who's incredibly important to this genre of music um, but basically Harris wrote an article in The Guardian in 2008 and his his comments on Big Beat as an idea as a scene in the 90s are quite important if we're going to explore this genre. It started as a breath of fresh air, exciting and liberating and ended up like the loud annoying drunken bloke you really wish would leave the party. Big Beat was very direct crammed full of euphoric moments and less focused on getting lost in the groove than house music. Some called it lager music as it wasn't essential to be on drugs to enjoy it, however most fans took ease or poppers just to be sure. This along with liberal use of the guitar made the scene more palatable to NME, who were swapping miserabilism for hedonism. Fatboy got on the cover and we had a big indie dance loving. This is why some music fans decried the importance of Big Beat as a genre because it's more popular, more immediate, more mainstream than some of the other dance and electronic music coming out of the 90s. I mean, you've got people like Aphex Twin and Ortec are coming out of here. So in comparison, people were, some people in the music community were thinking of Big Beat records as cliche, as basic. With IDM gaining more popularity and interest in the music community, some of these Big Beat records were seen as less cerebral, just a bit of fun and kind of throwaway. Well, I'm here to say, shock horror, you can actually enjoy both. <laughs> there are so many delights to have in the music of Big Beat. You have TBO3 flavored synthesizer tones, which are very prevalent in this music. You have catchy vocal hooks. You have clever sampling, often from funk and soul records from the 60s and 70s. You have fantastic break beats that you simply wish would not end. That infectious quality should not be underestimated, neither should the potency of the music. By 2002, Big Beat had all but diminished really, sort of fusing into the mainstream pop landscape of early noughties British music. But, you know, I think the influence of these DJs and musicians is absolutely undeniable on the dance and electronic music and mainstream pop world. I think you'll hear that if you listen to these five albums that I'm going to recommend today. Stick them on, soak up the sun, and just enjoy yourself with these five records. Number one, The Chemical Brothers with Exit Planet Dust, released in 1995. Beginning with the people who are considered the godfathers of the big beat sound, the Chemical Brothers were founded in Manchester in 1989 by Ed Simons and Tom Rowlands. Originally called the Dust Brothers, but having to change their name due to a lawsuit from an American production company with the same name, Tom and Ed exploded onto the scene with their debut record, Exit Planet Dust, which is a record full of bombastic energy. It's so much fun and it's chocked full of great tracks. In an interview for Music Magazine in June of 1995, the duo really cemented their mission statement. Nobody from the dance world has come up with an album to reflect these times. Why is that? Why is it left to a group like Oasis to express the way that young people want to go out and get battered every weekend? That's what the Chemical Brothers are about. Tom and I are out all the time, off to clubs and gigs, living fast, living it up. That's what I hope we're putting across on our records. It wasn't about being po-faced with their music, about a specific concept, it was about inspiring a good time in a club atmosphere, and that's exactly what Exit Planet Dust manages to achieve. Opening track Leave Home throws down with a funky bass motif and a catchy breakbeat, and the whole thing's typified with that Blake Baxter vocal sample, the brother's gonna work it out. That spacey electronic sound at the beginning of the track is actually sampled from Kraftwerk's Ohm Sweet Ohm, which proves that the duo were interested in crate digging and using whatever they could to fit their particularly danceable vision. Song to the Siren is the first single that Tom and Ed ever put out and they played it at club nights and witnessed the very positive reaction that clubbers were having to this music that they were making, this new kind of sound that utilised interesting samples, that utilised break beats, that was a lot of fun. A more hard hitting track, the bass and beat heavy sound is all elevated by this particularly haunting vocal sample taken from Dead Can Dance's Song of Sophia. This kind of sampling is another strong proponent of the big 
offbeat music. It's taking the catchiest vocal motif possible and placing it at the center of the track, making it the focal point. And by the time the track ends, you will find that that motif is just stuck in your head. I mean, I've been walking around for days with all the motifs from these different records, specifically from this record, just stuck in my head going over and over again. And I think that's part of Big Beat's success. You know, you hear that hook and you immediately remember the track and, and it's in your head forever. Chemical Beats is an absolute banger. The funk flecked acid bass just works so well with that brilliant drop around the three minute mark. Again, drops in the tracks, a very strong part of the Big Beat sound. Such a fun record. It blew away the cobwebs in the dance music scene and proved that accessibility doesn't have to mean compromise. Number two, Bentley Rhythm Ace with Bentley Rhythm Ace, released in 1997. Whilst I absolutely think that this record is Big Beat, it's very different to all of the other records that I've put on this list. Bentley Rhythm Ace are a Birmingham group, and that's from the Midlands of the UK. For those of you not versed in UK geography, not a particularly interesting fact, I suppose, but I've told you now, so I'll just move on. Richard March and Mike Stokes make up the group, formed in 1995, and with their eponymous debut record, offered the most off-the-wall, screwball album under the entire Big Beat banner. Acts like the Chemical Brothers and Fatboy Slim were taking very tasteful funk and soul samples and utilizing them in their music, and that wasn't of interest to Bentley Rhythm Ace. They were far more interested in finding their samples in more unlikely places. Our favorite thing was using really bad cover version albums and junk records. We used to go to the flea markets and spend a tenner each and come out with a hundred albums to sample from. Then we'd have a few beers, and when we came across a couple of bars we liked, we'd record it onto a DAT and build tracks from there. The opening of this record, Let There Be Flutes, begins with a sample taken from Fireman Sam, the children's TV cartoon about a fireman called Sam, obviously. The, the episode was called Bentley the Robot, so there's a slight in-joke there. And it just shows how bizarre some of the samples are that they decided to use on this record, and, and yet somehow it does work. And the track itself turns into this, this sort of flute-driven groover that would delight any fans of the Avalanches. The beat isn't quite as bombastic and as clean as the Chemical Brothers record, Exit Planet Dust, but the sampling and the focus on rhythm itself is just brilliant. The laughter at the beginning of the track after the Fireman Sam sample is apparently taken from a record that was put in schools to encourage children to move and dance. I love how off kilter that is, that's so strange, um, and it keeps turning up throughout the record if you listen intently. Why is a Frog 2 is a Latin percussion driven track so infectious, and it was actually built from some obscure Brazilian percussion record, and the track Sugar by Nancy Sinatra. The collage of ragtop Skoda car chase flirts with the ideas of breakcore with that skittering, snapping snare sound. Lovely alliteration there, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and the track keeps disappearing down into new pastures, but before you think you've caught onto the song, it changes completely. And it's fascinating to hear a band that are working within the parameters of this big beat sound, but they are making it their own thing entirely. In an interview with Future Music in 2016, Richard March talks about a lot of these tracks and effectively sums up the approach of Bentley Rhythm Ace as an act. We were getting bored of the same two bar loops, so wanted to add more stuff to it. It's always a case of something else needs to happen. That's kind of our modus operandi, if you like. Really good stuff. Number three, The Prodigy with The Fat of the Land, released in 1997. The Prodigy, like Chemical Brothers, are synonymous with 90s British dance music. Everybody's heard of Prodigy, that, that's just a fact. The Essex hailing group are charged with bringing electronica or alternative dance music to places like America, with absolute banging singles like Poison, which just absolutely took over the airwaves. Liam Howlett, Keith Flint and Maxim make up this core trio of The Prodigy. And they did something really special in that they managed to create tracks which really lit up dance floors everywhere. Tracks like Everybody in the Place, Out of Space, Fire Jericho. They did really well in the charts and the clubs, but they, they gained a lot of clout in the rave scenes. Effectively, everybody liked these tracks. Hewlett and Co. seem to be very capable of straddling that difficult line between accessible and credible. After 1994's second album, Music for the Jilted Generation, The Prodigy followed up with their third record, The Fat of the Land, but not before, in 96, releasing the absolute incendiary, no pun intended, maybe it was, single, Firestarter, a track which really threw the band into the public consciousness and ended up as the eighth track on the album that we're talking about today. Keith Flint, who up until this point had been part of the group but never contributed vocally, took centre stage on Firestarter with 
a vocal performance which is era defining. Everybody has heard it and everybody knows how it goes. And with that maniac breakbeat and the screwed up guitar taking from the track SOS by the Breeders, it creates a heady mix of anarchy and rage. This punky approach mirrored a shift in countercultural attitudes in the dance music scene. I mean, it's already there in the previous album title, Music for the Jilted Generation. I mean, you can hear that. But in 1994, the Criminal Justice Bill was passed by UK Parliament. And what that bill did was, it really did try to attack the dance music scene and the raves that were going on, a big part of British counterculture in the 90s. So there was a specific section of this bill, which is the most ridiculous, and I'll, I'll read it out to you. It's music that's characterized by the emission of a succession of repetitive beats, and that allowed police to shut down raves and dance club nights, and anything that had a fast BPM, basically, or a repetitive beat. I mean, imagine that, an act that's passed by Parliament that's based on how fast the BPM of the music is. I mean, that is no wonder people in the community and the musicians that were making this music felt that that was a personal attack on their art form and what they wanted to do. I, mean, I just, it's, it's ridiculous. An attitude against the state that began with music for the jilted generation, you can hear it on a track like Their Law, for example, is only amplified by Firestarter and those rebellious lyrics from Flint. I'm the trouble starter, punkin instigator. I'm the fear addicted, danger illustrated. I'm a fire starter, twisted fire starter. It's a shift from the feel good music that the Chemical Brothers were making and even some of the earlier Prodigy tracks like Out of Space. But there's definitely a more attitudinal streak with a track like Firestarter and that's echoed again in the opening track of Fat of the Land, Smack My Bitch Up, a title that was bound to stir controversy and I'm pretty sure that's why it's there. This track has the same insurgent attitude as Firestarter but like that track is an absolute blast. You have the infectious breakbeat, those brilliant samples that uh, come from places as varied as Cool and the Gang Rage Against the Machine and Afrique and they, they use all of these different sounds to concoct this warped dance tune. On a track like Diesel Power the group go down a more conventional hip-hop route and they have their legendary Cool Keith featuring on vocals. The track Narayan feels paranoid, it has that same air of revolt and cynicism that the rest of the record has and that's even more incredible when you realise how successful this album was and it's proof that Big Beat can be greater than the sum of its parts. And by all accounts, this is a cracking record. It's probably my favorite record of the five that I'm giving you today. Just a, a personal favorite. I love it and I, I listen to it still quite regularly. So check it out, have a listen, enjoy yourself. Number four, Fatboy Slim with You've Come A Long Way Baby, released in 1998. After starting the video and talking about Damien Harris, the co-founder of Skint Records, we land on his biggest success story, Norman Cook, AKA Fatboy Slim. Cook used to be the bassist for a band called The House Martins. They're an indie rock band from Hull, and you'll probably recognize some of the tracks. If you seek them out, you'll probably recognize a track like Caravan of Love, or maybe even Happy Hour. It's in DJing though that Cook found his true calling, taking up the guise of Fatboy Slim, and in no small way defining the mainstream dance music scene in the mid to late 90s, specifically in Britain. If Exit Planet Dust is the party statement, and the fat of the land is the zestful hedonism, then You've Come A Long Way Baby is, is those ideas distilled into the most popular possible incarnation of that idea. This is the music that brought together the Ravers and the Blur and Oasis fans. It, it brought everybody together because it was just so likeable and also so approachable and accessible. Even if people say they don't like Fatboy Slim, everybody probably likes a Fatboy Slim track and I don't think you can deny his penchant for crate digging and finding the perfect soul or funk sample that just get stuck in your head and the way that he builds a track around that with his beats and bass and any other additional samples that he's definitely got a talent there clearly his breaks and hooks are expertly engineered to make you move that is exactly what they do and although better living through chemistry is a great big beat album and it was a success you've come a long way baby was seismic in its reputation and its critical success and its commercial success it's general acclaim. The Piano Led Praise You is the first track that Cook ever received a number one for, and when you listen to it, it's no surprise why it struck a chord. Shit pun. The three chord sequence coupled with that Camille Yarbrough vocal sample taken from her 1975 funk track, Take Your Praise, makes for such a fun, uplifting piece of music. It's a track that everybody can enjoy. You've got that funky guitar line, the lively bass motif, the crisp drums. What impresses me about the record is that it's not all filler just for the sake of that killer 
Praise You track, which became number one, because it could very easily have been like a vehicle for that track, like some albums tend to be. But this is not the case. Opening track right here, right now, serves as a perfect example of this. It's X dramatic string samples from a track called Ashes, The Rain and Iron. It marries it with a booming beat and it just brings so much vitality to everything. A killer way to start a record. Rockefeller Skank is the track with that great vocal hook that everybody has heard right about now. The Funk Soul Brother, check it out now. Instantly recognizable. It's taken from a, a, a track called Sliced Tomatoes, which is this 70s soul track. Really just a great bit of sampling from Cook and proving he really knows what he's doing when he takes these 70s funk and soul ideas and turns them into 90s dance tracks. It's a good representation of what Cook can do because he tweaks the ideas of the original song. He doesn't lose that carefree attitude that Sliced Tomatoes has. He just updates it slightly to fit in with his own musical palette does it so well. The delightfully titled Fucking in Heaven has some solid breaks in it. The horn riff on Gangsta Trippin' is, is an absolute highlight of the record for me. It's just a feel good record and it's got so many good songs. Really good example of Big Beat. It's a slice of 90s dance music, which is accessible, uh, but it's also a, a really well constructed piece of music. Number five, Propeller Heads with Dex and Drums and Rock and Roll, released in 1998. Here comes another English duo, this time Will White and Alex Gifford forming Propeller Heads in 1995. One of those strange musical flashes in the pan, Propeller Heads never released any more records after this first one, and yet it had a lot of success. So nine of the 13 tracks on the sequencing became singles, so that gives you an idea to the success of this record and the individual tracks, but they never did anything after. This single Propeller Heads record though is a shining example of Big Beat, the attitude of Big Beat, the style of Big Beat, the way it makes you feel as a listener, and arguably the most immediately satisfying album on this list. This record has a lot of gems on it and it's tracks you've probably heard before even if you don't necessarily know that they were Propeller Heads tracks because at the end of the 90s and the early noughties you couldn't really move for Propeller Heads songs being used in TV shows, in games and in films. For example, Spy Break was the music from the lobby scene in The Matrix, Bang On was on Wipeout 64, bloody great game, Big Dog was on Gran Turismo 2, History Repeating was in There's Something About Mary, their larger than life beats and infectious sample building was everywhere. And although this record sounds probably the most anachronistic, the most 90s of all of the records on this list, I feel like it's the one that maybe has aged the most. It is still such a well put together piece of work. Going back to History Repeating, which sounds as if it's sampling Shirley Bassey, Believe it or not, it's actually a collaboration with The Great Singer, and it's this brilliant soul-flecked track which has a bass line evoking green onions, it has these syncopated organ stabs, and then it has that very formidable mezzo-soprano voice of Bassi herself. Opening track Take California's sizzling beat is actually taken from a 70s track called Hit or Miss by Odetta, and Gifford speeds the track up really to drive that first song forward. Another collaboration sees 90s legends De La Soul rapping on the track 360 Oh Yeah, turning the duo's music into this sticky, slow hip hop groove that just allows them to do their thing. It's a really great track and it makes me sad that they haven't collaborated more because I'd like to, I'd like an album of that stuff to be honest. The track On Her Majesty's Secret Service marries breakbeats with the pomp of James Bond orchestral delights, which is great in an oh so 90s way. It's a record best enjoyed through its contagious beats. When Big Beat truly succeeds, it's the rhythm, it's the beat that takes over. And that's what White and Gifford managed to do time and time again with this album. And that's my five albums to get you into Big Beat. I did want to talk about Basement Jacks, but I found that when I was listening to these albums again, Basement Jacks goes much more down the funky house side of things, even though what they're doing is Big Beat in influence. I don't think it really fits the same sounds as the sounds these five records are making. That's why I haven't talked about them, but it is worth checking out some of Basement Jax's records because you do get that similar vibe of feel good dance music with a great sampling sensibility. I'm gonna end with a comment from Damien Harris because I began with one and I think his comments perfectly sum up this genre as an idea. He believes towards the end he may have committed the cardinal sin of Big Beat. In my defense, when it's your own baby, you can't help but fret when you feel it's being misrepresented, but I stupidly forgot two of the key points from my original manifesto for Skint. One, it's good to get up the noses of the old guard and piss off the music snobs. And two, never take it too seriously, after all.
it's just a big disco. Thanks for watching this video. Please join me on the Deep Cuts Discord on Tuesday at 10 o'clock BST to listen to The Prodigy's The Fat of the Land. Great record, really looking forward to listening to that with a load of you, so come join us. Thank you, as always, to my patrons for keeping Deep Cuts going. I massively appreciate it. I'll see you all next week.